the Polestar 2. Some of you guys might not know what this car is, and that's okay. The Polestar name actually derives from Volvo's team racing name. So with a name like that on a car on the road, you have to think that it must hold up to high values. And today, we're gonna find out. In today's video, I'm gonna take it on a drive and test its performance. Drive, we're gonna test the car zero to 60 in three, two, one. We're gonna go around the interior and see how well the dash and gadgets work. System, it does have Google Assistant, so let's try it out. I, I would honestly consider maybe trading my Tesla for one of these. And there's a gorgeous shift knob. We're gonna experience how good the range is. We have a charge area where you can select exactly where you want to charge the car to. And we're gonna test a lot more, so stay tuned. Now let's start with the obvious. This being a Polestar, it's actually a Volvo. This is Volvo's entry into the EV game, and it decided that instead of just introducing Volvo EVs, they started an entire new car brand to do so. And therefore, the key is actually quite interesting. It's just like a Volvo key, a normal Volvo key, but with the Polestar logo. And it's quite nice, just, uh, but it's a key. <laughs> However, it does come with a secondary key, and they call it the activity key. And it's actually kind of nice because you could drop it in your pocket, maybe put it in your shoe. If you're going for a run and maybe you have an iPod shuffle, not even your phone, and you just want to carry light, you can just bring the activity key with you and it will unlock and do everything the main key does. You'll notice though in the rear, it only has a Polestar logo and nowhere on the actual car itself does it actually say Polestar. So most people will be confused when they see these and not know what they are. The only place it does say Polestar happens to be right on the tail light on the side. So you can see Volvo is being very determined to get the Polestar logo out there in the world and let them know that this is not a Volvo. When accessing the front trunk, one has to come under here to the footwell and pull a plastic tab. After pulling the plastic tab, you can bring your hand to the right side the underneath, and pull another tab, and that's how you access your charging ports as well as other storage. However, for a car in this price category, I would have expected this to be an electronic opener. Moving under the trunk, you can hold the trunk button and doing so will release the trunk, which is electronic, and you have lots of boot space. This is actually a hatchback, not a sedan, very similar to the Model S, so you have lots of storage bin area space. You have a little pouch that you can flip up where you can put your grocery bags or separate items as needed. When folding this down, you can then pop this open and find even more storage below. So you might be asking, how is this car charged? Well, it has a very unique plastic cap right here, as you can tell, that you can then charge the car from right here. Very unique plastic cap. The EPA claims that this car can go 250 miles on a charge. However, in my experience from a daily driving perspective, I realized that it's closer to 220 because you know, you usually will go to 90% or 80% charge. You won't usually always go to the 100%. What's really cool about the Polestar 2 is that it's the first production car to actually be running Google's new mobile operating system for cars. And they had this gorgeous, beautiful four tile touchscreen. And now since this is the Google operating system, it does have Google Assistant. So let's try it out. Route me to Polestar San Jose. Polestar San Jose is 23 minutes from your location by car in light traffic. And just like that, I gave us directions back to the dealership. It was very smooth, very fluid. I actually really like that. And now you might be asking yourself, how do I get out of the maps now that I'm here? And it's kind of like an iPad where it has a home button down here. And if you press the home button, you can actually come back to the main menu. Once here, you can connect your phone, see driving performance, Bluetooth, or you can go to the car icon up here and you can see a whole list of driving options, such as the steering wheel feel, whether you want to be light, standard, or firm. You also have a sport mode you can press that turns off traction control. Down at the very bottom left of this screen, you can find a one pedal drive option. So you can make it similar to other EVs where you can have it on standard, which will break 50%. Low actually breaks 25% or you can have it completely off. You can also have it creep with on and off to make it roll kind of like an automatic car if you wish, depending on your type of driving style and what you want in your day-to-day -day driving. Then if you come up here and you hit the assist button, you can actually see a whole list of driving assistance that the car has already installed. So there's a driver support adaptive cruise control. However, if you click the little dots in the adaptive cruise control, you'll see that you can also turn it off to become a normal cruise control. So you can pick and choose how you like to drive. You can also come over to lane keep aid, which will keep you in your lane. And if you press the little dots, you can actually have it do the steering assist, just vibrate the steering wheel, or you can have it do both, which is kind of nifty. Then we have the driver alert system that determines whether or not you're alert and it will actually 
wake you up and alert you that you probably should pull over. Moving on, we have roadside information that will tell you about speed limits and other roadsides on the road. We also have the collision avoidance system that's pretty standard and will allow the car to brake for you if something that arises in front. Moving on, we have a charge area where you can select exactly where you want to charge the car to. Volvo recommends 90%. However, depending on your needs, you can put it to 100% if you're going on a long drive or any percent that you specifically want. What's very unique about this car is it has a car status icon where if you click on it, it'll actually tell you the status of the car and it says no warnings, all is good. That's great to know. Over in the more tab, you have a lot of stuff as well, such as locking, where you can come in and change how you want the car to lock, change the interior lighting, where you want mood lighting or not, exterior lighting, exactly how you want all the lights, including turn signals to operate. You can adjust the mirrors. Now the mirrors, that's a very interesting one. When you adjust the mirrors on this car, you'll actually notice the entire mirror moves, not just the piece of glass, which is very unique, and I actually find it very elegant and smooth. On top of that, you can also change the mirror auto tint from standard to dark to light to, to adjust exactly how much you want it to fade light that's coming up behind you from other vehicles. And now what's really fascinating about this vehicle is that it also does have a 360 view. So you can actually drive around and see what the car is seeing. And you can see my tripod in 360 as we go around it. So as you guessed, this is a car. So it does have, you know, two cup holders, storage area, the cupboards on the left of the doors, a generic glove box. There is a wireless charger mat up here in the front, as well as two USB-C ports. You name it, it has everything that a normal car would have. So this is the Polestar dashboard, and you can come down here and you can push this button. And by doing that, you can actually adjust the dash and you can actually get Google Maps to appear in your dashboard. So that pretty much concludes everything I have for you here up in the front seat. So let me pass it on to my colleague Vivek who will take you a ride in the back seat. Moving on to the back seat of the Polestar 2. One of the things I noticed is that there's a good amount of legroom back here. I had these seats level to where John was just sitting in a comfortable driving position up front. There's tons of room. There's adequate headroom up here. These vents in the center are really nice. They have these metal controls on them and these little metal knobs that you can twist to turn them on and off underneath. We have two USB-C ports right there, as well as my favorite thing about the back of this car, heated seats in the rear. Between the two side seats, we have a center armrest that has three cup holders, two bigger ones on the side and a smaller one in the middle. Folds up for the fifth seat right here. And we have these super pretty gold seat belts on the performance model of the Polestar 2. So now let's find out how well the Polestar 2 actually does on a daily drive and out and about on public roads. So we're out here up on a mountain road and so that way we can figure out how well the car actually does in handling. So I'm gonna put the car into firm steering feeling and in sport mode. First reactions on acceleration, it's very, very quick. The brakes work very well. Noticing in these bends, it's, it's very hugged. Yeah, for a car that's kind of in between a sedan and a crossover in terms of how high it is off the ground, when you're actually driving the car, from a POV perspective, it actually does feel like you're driving this smaller low-end sedan. And when I'm taking these turns, it's just hugging it like a small car. However, I know this is a larger car that is higher off the ground. So I don't know how Polestar was able to get the car to handle so well with its current configuration. This car really does carry its weight very well. I was taking it on some really tight hairpins right before this drive. For being basically a family sedan, it hugs the road. Like John said, the brakes are incredible. It just has big Brembos with drilled rotors up front. I would equate this to be as if a BMW made an EV. Yeah, right? It's it, like it's an EV version of a BMW. Yeah, being the performance model, they put good sticky tires on this car. I think that makes a big difference. The way it carries its weight is really good for an EV. You don't feel the heaviness of the battery pack. Certainly not. And that, what's really nice is that because the battery pack is right below, be underneath your feet, I think that is how they're able to take a car that's kind of a little bit elevated and get it to handle so well up here. Very annoying blinker. Yeah, right, the blinker sounds like you're like popping bubble wrap. Exactly, it does sound like, let me turn it on again. I don't know if you can hear it at YouTube, but yeah, it sounds like I'm clicking like a piece of like metallic metal and it's going click, 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 click. Like those really annoying click, 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 click tools you would have <laughs> as a kid, those little toys. Sounds like a, like a legitimate like click. It's odd. <laughs> so now we're at the part of the drive where we're gonna test the car's zero to 60. So let's see how well the car does in three, Two, one, go. 60. So the zero to six in this car is actually quite quick. I do notice that depending on the tarmac we're on, there is a little bit of torque steer. So it does kind of pull the steering wheel a little left, a little right. 
but the car's assistance does actually a really good job at keeping the wheel mostly straight depending on the traction you're on. Zero to 60 gives you a nice little feeling in the body. So in conclusion, what do I think about this car? I actually think it's a great car. If you're in the market for an EV and you can't quite afford a Tesla, this is the car to get, even if you can't afford a Tesla, because with the federal EV credits, you can get this car as low as $39,000. It starts at 51, but in California, you can get it for 39. Other states, you don't really get the California incentives, but even with the federal incentives, that's $7,500 off the sticker price. And that's quite an incentive. This is actually probably one of the highest quality built EVs I've actually been behind in my lifetime reviewing these cars so that says something the ride is very smooth and comfortable the acceleration is there it packs a punch and it really loves to turn in when you're going really quick up in these mountain roads i very much enjoy the car and this will be probably on the top three of the next vvs i buy once i sell my model three here is how the polestar 2 rates compared to other evs we have tested if you like this video please make sure to like it and subscribe thank you so much for watching goodbye